Hey, <laughs> greetings, 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 greetings. It's so good to be here at this moment to be able to share with you. So I see Leo is in the house. Uh, live your dreams in the house. So let me know if I am being heard. Who All those that are in the house, anyone can let me know if I'm being heard. Oh, so it's working. Thank you so much. Appreciate it all. Appreciate it all. Now, this is uh, <laughs> this is a moment of uh, new life, and it's really new life according to re the reality of our moment. So we were not able to go live on Zoom for conversations with Aris. So we have switched to have conversations with Aris here on IG Live. And uh, the whole thrust of the conversations with me really is pinned down based on the uh, your questions. So with a Q&A on Zoom Live, you know how that goes, because Zoom is, not Zoom, on IG. The questions are zooming past me. <laughs> you know, the questions are popping up and leaving very quickly. So, unfortunately, it's not going to be a smooth me watching the screens and, uh, and answering your questions uh, as effectively uh, as possible. So, for those of you who are here who said you've tried me on, on Zoom, we're not going to be on Zoom. So, pass the word. Uh, my team is passing the word. They're letting people... Uh, that are signed up to our mailing list on Zoom, they are notifying everyone that uh, to meet me here on IG Live. You know, so uh, so yes, uh, I am not in Panama. Someone is asking me where in Panama that I live. I am not in Panama at the moment. Uh, you know, I am I am uh, a Fulani, and Fulani we have been journeying around the planet. For, for thousands of years, and Panama has been one of my stops. It's a frequent stop, but right now I don't stop over too long in Panama. And, of course, since, you know, the lockdown, I've been, you know, happily locked down in the Cayman Islands. So I'm in the Grand Cayman. Uh, I am shining. Thank you. Uh, can I make pies without a dehydrator? Of course you can make pies without a dehydrator. You can use... Uh, a soft pie crust. Pie crust don't have to be to, to be crusty. So, you know, so just do a pie shell rather than a pie crust. You know, keep it soft, keep it moist, and that's even much more healthier for you. We need moisture. We don't need all this dried stuff going on. And, uh, and this is one of the things that, you know, I really want to bring to light here right now in this conversation. I think I would really like to keep this, comp not keep it, but, you know, uh, share with you as much of what I know based on my past 50 plus years of experience of living the life that I'm, that I'm loving right now. And uh, within the past 50 years, I, uh, yeah, some scientists have pointed out that since 1965, 1965 to 2015, 2020 now, we're talking 55 years ago, was the advent of the processed food industry. 55 years ago, there was no processed food to speak of at all. We all ate home. We all prepared foods and ate with the family, or if we ate out, it was in local, small, little mom and pop cook shops, you know. And probably, you know, there may have been like Chinese restaurants because they've been around, you know, for a long time. <laughs> Chinese restaurants and local, local grease spots, you know, that kind of stuff. But within the past 55 years, everything has shifted in terms of our consumption, you know, reality. And what the processed food industry have done, according to scientific, you know, research that's out there, the, the, the fast food industry have got us sugared to death. Sugared to death. Because they have used sugar to mask 
practically all other taste buds. So if something is stink and rotten, they throw sugar at it and it kind of freshen it up. It tastes nice. You know, something is sour and bitter, they freshen it up. Sweet and sour, all these pungent and even spicy tastes, they have masked with sugar. But anyway, processed food is definitely a deal that we need to, to deal with uh, based on the reckoning that we got right now. So yeah, these questions are popping real fast. Uh, thank you for sharing the light and knowledge. Yes, you're welcome, you're welcome. Uh, my nutritional guide, uh, that is the sun fired feasting, fasting, and healing system based on the electromagnetic energies of food. What spring water do you recommend? If you must drink spring water, let it be a mountain spring water. But the best spring water to drink is the water from the coconut spring, the coconut tree. The coconut tree is a spring. It's got roots and tubers and, and, and all kinds of channels leading deep down into the earth and getting water out and, and cleaning it up, purifying it, uh, and making it uh, fit for human consumption. So living water. But if you're going to deal with a bottled processed water, uh, hey, a mountain spring is probably your best shot of what's out there. But be careful. Uh, how can we naturally alkalize, alkalinize your water at home? Naturally alkalinize water at home, it's a deep thing. It's a deep thing. You got to just basically just mix it with lemon juice or orange juice or pineapple juice you have to add some alkaline energy to it some alkaline foods to it some alkaline juice to it you know you have to activate it you have to bring it up you have to electrify it you got to add that electrical charge to it but what it's going to do is going to dilute the electrical current that's in the food that you're using to alkalinize the water so it's a big serious catch that we're in uh, what is your thought on enzyme supplements. No supplements for me. Enzyme supplements, they're all made of papain, papaya. Here, I got my papaya right here. I got my papaya right here. So I'm going to eat my papaya. I'm going to eat my papaya rather than taking it in a processed form. So no process anything in this body. My body is about fresh. That's the only thing that's not processed. And once it's packaged, it is not fresh, it is devitalized in some way, some form or the other, and your body really doesn't even recognize it as food. You know, so key limes, you know, hey, if it's seedless, there you go, you're in another pit right there. So you need limes that have seeds, you need fruits that have seeds that are capable of reproducing itself, you know. If you don't have a choice, that's your best option, sure, go for it. Why not? <laughs> you know, it's better than basically just drinking the, the, the purified water, the bottled water, the spring water. But these things will help, again, to activate the energy in the water for you. Uh, so, someone is asking me, uh, should you grow a certain herb? Ashwagandha. You know, grow any herb that you can grow. Grow all herbs that you can grow. You know, herbs are definitely very powerful healing foods. But, you know, it's, it's interesting because we're doing a lot of things that are challenging the value of the herbs that we're using to heal ourselves. So, you know, my conversation with you today is that, you know, if herbs are for the healing of the nation, whether it's, it's spearmint, licorice, uh, you know, uh, you name it, all herbs, you know, including ganja, <laughs> you know, if those things are for the healing of the nation and you're taking herbs to heal yourself, that should one day come to a terminal point. You should come to a point where you actually are truly healed, that you're not going to use, need herbs anymore. <laughs> okay. You're not going to use herbs anymore. So as much herbs that are being smoked in a lot of our places for years, hundreds of years, at least I know for the past 50, 60 years, some people who have been smoking herbs constantly, why aren't they healed yet? Why do they keep smoking? Some people have been drinking herb tea. Why those teas haven't healed them as yet? Why do they still have to be drinking herb tea 60 50, 40, 70 years later. 
So what are we doing to counteract <laughs> the healing of the herbs? And what are we using the healing that we get from the herbs to do? We squander it and we go put in more stuff in the body that needs to be healing. So let's let's come up straight and let's be let's square off with our, with with ourselves individually, personally. You know, you should never ever get sick, okay? There's no need to get sick if you follow the principles of the original law of food. And you know, we could just simplify it to your scriptures. In some place in, in one of your scriptures it says, Behold, for I have given unto you the seed yielding trees, and unto you they shall be your meat. If there is a law of food, that is the damn law of food. Your food should come from a seed yielding source, and it should bring seeds with it. So that's what I'm eating today. Let me flip my camera around and show you what I'm at today. Here, this is this is sweet sop. No, this is custard apple. Okay, got seeds in it. And everything else here I got on my table, this is my consumption. This is what I'm eating these days. Custard apple, mangoes, knees, berries, more custard apple, soursop, star fruit, papaya, watermelon. And every single one of these foods have seeds in it. So here's a, a, a custard apple seed. This little black dot right here. Okay, you know this represents a whole nother custard apple tree. Okay, so your food should be from a seed yielding, seed bearing, <laughs> seed yielding source. So it's capable of reproducing itself, period. So anything other than this, seedless oranges, seedless watermelons, and uh, you name it, whatever it is, you know, you're going to be really uh, coming to a terminal point. You know, you're coming to a terminal point. So... I'm going to uh, really indulge as we talk here. Oh, mm. This custard apple. This is how I get my sugar. We're talking real sucrose, not fructose. That is in all these processed foods. All of these processed foods. Tons and tons and tons of sugar. Processed sugar. And then if that's not enough, then they got the artificial sugars. That's why even today, I don't want anybody to be talking to me about coconut nectar, some coconut sugar, some processed sugar made from some part of the coconut tree. It is processed. It is still processed. I don't want to hear about agave. I don't want to hear about maple syrup at all. <laughs> These are still processed sugar that the body cannot deal with. I, I, because you're messing with those things, you cannot enjoy fruits. You know, and then also the sugar that you get from complex carbohydrates, from rice and potatoes and beans and all of these types of things, you know, wheat and uh, barley and oats. Ultimately, it has to be broken down into sugar. So let me just enjoy my custard apple and my watermelon and these other things while I look at these questions here. Mm, mm -mm. Yes, dates are good. Dates are a good form of sugar. Rich, concentrated, pure sugar, unprocessed. Because it's dehydrated, it is not processed. But you still got to be careful. You don't want to whip yourself by just go snacking on dates. You can use it as a sweetener. But back up, period. If there's something that you need to sweeten that you have to use dates or any other sweetener, the question mark first needs to be posed to, do I need to really eat these things? If I must sweeten it in order to enjoy it, why do I have to sweeten it? in order to, 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 to enjoy this food, to appreciate this food. No, it's a big issue. And most of the time when you're trying to sweet some sort of forget, for example, if you're going to make, say, uh, lemonade, water and lemon, and then you're going to try to put some sugar in it, maple syrup or agave or something like that, what the heck are you trying to actually sweeten? You're not really trying to sweeten the lemon. For sure, you're trying to mask the sourness, you know, of the lemon, but also the water key is what you're actually trying to sweeten. 
because you can I see little children, little two year old that would just eat a lemon like they're eating a candy. <laughs> So when that lemon, which is sour, which is acid tasting, when it digests in your system, it secretes alkalinity. It, alkal it does not secrete acid. It is not an acid forming food. It is not a detrimental sugar because ultimately it's all about sugar. We run on sugar. Human beings run on uh, sucrose. We need that sugar. So uh, crystal sugar snap peas, are a great example. Great fresh or absolutely sugar sugar snap peas. You know, sh absolutely. So this is where we want to come from. So yeah, the questions are like just really popping heavy and uh, any nectar kind of drink is fake sugar. Nectar type of drink. So mango is a nectar fruit. This is a nectar. So what you want to do is take your mango and blend it with coconut water and you have a mango ne nectar. If you only have water to work with, you blend it with just enough water so you get a rich mango fruit juice. But you press it out, get rid of the fiber. And this is one of the biggest challenge that we have with, uh, with processed food. Is processed food destroys all of the fiber in the food all of the fiber you, you get an orange and you freeze it boom you thaw it out the fiber is gone and what's been wrapped into the fiber the micronutrients the bioflavonoids the riboflavins and these types of things so what they did they take the orange juice it freeze it and sell you frozen orange juice <laughs> So it's all about business. It's all about business, and the word is out. The information is out. Uh, uh, what's your thoughts on sea moss? Sea moss, sea plants, seaweed, yes. Excellent, excellent. Go for your sea moss. This is what the fish eat. This is what the fish eat. And you're trying to get, you know... Uh, Certain certain types of of of, uh, of oil, you know, uh, you're trying to get certain type of omega oil, and you use wild fish. And what do you heck you think wild fish eating? They're eating seaweeds. So you tap into your seaweeds and keep it going because you know the micro minerals are there. Okay. Oh man, these questions. What's your thought on fasting? Fasting is it. This is what I'm doing. When I, when I show you this, this layout of these fruits I have here, this is all I'm eating for the next few days because on the 15th of this month, I am going to go into a fasting mode. Starting the 15th of May, I'm going to go on a 73-day fast of drinking primarily coconut water and mango. Because mangoes are in season right now. So for 73 days, I'm going to be making mango juice. I get my coconut water, blend the mango in it, and press it out. And having that mango nectar juice uh, for 73 days. Of course, I'm going to have other fruits, but, you know, in, in a micro way. You know, sort of like noni juice and things of this nature. You know, lemon juice and... Those types of things. But prim my primary consumption is going to be coconut water with some uh, degree of fruit juice in it. Uh, any herbs for high blood pressure? Yes, there are herbs that are good for high blood pressure. You can go online and pick it up. But the most value you can get from me right now is for you to stop doing the things that are causing your blood pressure to be high. Okay? Fatty foods and rich Process high carbohydrate foods, starches, starches, that combination of, 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 of meat and potato, <laughs> protein and starch, that is what's driving your blood pressure to these incredible heights. So number one, number one, the first thing you got to do is remove the cause of your high blood pressure before you even try to go to the herb. 
The herb is going to help you clear out what's already in there. Or better yet, do them both simultaneously, concurrently. But you cannot just go for the herb and overlook the cause. Going after the cause is the first protocol of any healing regimen. So, hmm. This custard apple, I can't wait to hang up and, and leave you all alone so you can leave me to enjoy my custard apple. This custard apple is slamming. It's the joint. <laughs> and this one was ripen on the tree. Real sugar. Real, you know, simple carbohydrate. And all I do is drink my coconut water to go with it to keep it moving, to keep it moving. Uh... Quinoa substitute for rice. Yes, quinoa can work good for rice junkies, you know. But it's a, these things are all transition. All of these grains are seeds for cereal grass. <laughs> They're seeds for cereal grass. But yes, it would definitely help you to move away from the rice. You know, the, the only thing about rice that why a lot of you can eat so much and can tolerate it is that rice does not produce the, the heavy acid reaction as a lot of the other starches, especially something like wheat, you know, that uh, gluten and those kinds of things, and even your potatoes and, and a lot of these types of things. That's why, you know, many of you have been able to get away with it, but it, there comes that point where you can't tolerate it anymore. So quinoa is definitely uh, a great uh, way to go till you get over the hump and get back home. What, is go what has been going on with this whole era of this lockdown and this uh, viral situation is that many more of us <laughs> are coming home. We're coming home to life. We're coming home to natural foods, organic foods, vegetarian foods, vegan food, call it thing, whatever you want to call it, but many are getting up, giving up on processed foods. Many are giving up on, pro on, on meats, animal products, dairy products. I mean, dairy products have really plummeted within the past 20 years or so. You know, people are not into that, like that, at all. And absolutely, you know, they've cut back on their meat consumption, but what has really driven up radically from a very low position 55 years ago is the consumption of processed food. This is the real demon that most of us need to deal with now. And it's good now that you see with a lot of these places that are closed that you have less access to processed food. But interestingly enough, those are really the only food joints that are actually up and running big time. You see the lines around the, the takeout, you know, uh, carousel window, <laughs> the car lines lining up to buy that processed food. Hey, setting your system up, setting yourself up. Uh, someone needs to come and meet me. Many ones need to come and meet me. You know, so I, I do pray that, you know, uh, these airports open up soon because the sooner you can come here and meet me, the better off most of us will be because, you know, we need more of us living on this level. Uh, dehydrated burdock. Okay. Can I use spirulina? Spirulina, spirulina, spirulina. Be careful with spirulina, at least what they're calling spirulina today. You know, when I go to St. Lucia, you know, and my sister, uh, Sister Gwen down there, take me and show me spirulina that is grown on, by the sea, on rocks, by the sea, that beautiful green translucent seaweed. It is quite a big difference between that spirulina and what these folks, and I'm, I, I got to call them clowns, because they've been clowning around with us. These folks growing in some lake in the U.S., spirulina and chlorella and these types of things, be careful, because the only way I see, I've ever seen those things is in a powdered form. But yet, when I go to St. Lucia and I see that seaweed, that spirulina, growing off of a rock, I know this is real. But no, I don't trust no powders at all. So don't sell me any powdered spirulina. Sell me a whole leaf of spirulina, 
Okay, so me the whole leaf of spirulina. So no, I I I, I don't go there. I want to recognize what I eat. I want to recognize what I put into the body. And as again that I mentioned, my food primary intake is foods that come with seeds. And spirulina does not come with seeds. Period. Even the ones off the sea. So those are remedial steps. <laughs> But I'm going all the way to the top, to higher heights. I want foods that are grown at higher heights. I want fruits, high moisture fruits that got all the sugar I need that I can get up and zip, you know, without having to process them and turn my body into a refinery. So uh, my thoughts on uh, whole wheat bread. Whole wheat bread is, is just a, a, a glorified, sophisticated staff of death. <laughs> it's just, it just has the fiber in it, you know, but it still have those eight layers or six layers of gluten, glue, that white flour. So, yes, you're getting it with, with, with the bran and the germ. So, yeah, it may pass through your system a little more easier than the white flour. That is the only difference, basically, you're dealing with. But flour is flour. Flour is flour. You need to get, if you're going to deal with wheat, get your, your whole wheat berry, soak it, germinate it, sprout it, plant it, and grow the damn thing into wheat grass. Wheat grass, where you juice it and you only need a teaspoon, an ounce, a tablespoon. You don't need a big loaf of wheat in the form of bread. <laughs> Because in the processing, you've turned it into a beautiful sucrose, an electrical food, that wheat. And it's sweet, but you don't need that much. Just a little will go a long way because it has a similar molecular structure as your blood. So we need to get away from this damn bread concept. That is one of the things that's been holding us back. We got a beautiful fruit that grows right here where I'm at and in the rest of the tropics. And if we let that fruit ripen up, it's a custard, just like this sweet sop, just like this custard apple. It's a custard. And guess what the heck? Our people have been pigeonholed into taking this fruit and harvesting it before it becomes a custard, before it becomes ripe. And they roast the damn thing and call it a breadfruit. There's no such damn thing as no breadfruit, Okay. That is a complex carbohydrate starch. That is a starchy, uncooked fruit that you did not allow the sun to completely fire it and cook it and turn it into a custard like this custard apple that you can take that ripe breadfruit, cut it in half like what I'm doing with this custard apple and you take a damn spoon and you can spoon out your breadfruit custard and eat it. But yeah, we think we come out, you know, and we owe so much to this legacy. We think we owe so much to this this legacy of of uh, of, 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 of growing up without having access to food, and we could take certain things that would give us a belly food, like starches, you know, sweet potato, potato, rice, yam, you know, fruit. And pick it before it's ripe. Green bananas. And process them. Boil them. Cook them. And eat them for a belly full. So let's come on back home. Let's come on back home. I live in California where I can order exotic fruits. Yes, get your exotic fruits. Uh, what? Yeah, the question just popped off my radar so quick. Are, are baby bananas good? Yes, baby bananas are good. Baby bananas are great. But get your bananas organic. Get them wild. Get them somehow other than being processed or manipulated by big agribusiness. So, which means you really probably just have to come on back home. Because baby bananas don't stay fresh too long. They, they don't hold up in shipping. Except for the commercialized ones that really have been gassed. Uh, yes. So ones are, uh, yes. Ones are that, that are dealing with fruits and roots. Fruits and roots. Major company major company fruits and roots where you can get these fruits that I'm showing you right here watermelons with seeds custard apple you know sour sop sour sop radical major fruit yes 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 brother chaka yes yes got the fruits and roots 
going on. So thank you so much, my brother, with the fruits and roots. So look them up, look them up, and order your exotic baby bananas from Fruits and Roots. Yes, someone asks, what foods to eat to replace meat? Look. You need to ask, what foods have been meat trying to replace? <laughs> Animal meat has been trying to replace plant protein, plant meat. Yes, the meat of the nut, the meat of the almond, the meat of the Brazil nut, the meat of the walnut. Plant protein meat that requires no cooking. You know, not pea protein from beans. You don't need that, especially the way they, 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 they process it and texturize it and give you these, these freaking faking foods these days and calling it plant-based meat. Come on. No. Uh, your seeds, your nuts, sunflower seeds, sesame seeds, those are definitely the way to go to get your protein from a wholesome sort. Jackfruit Jackfruit needs to be ripened up. Same thing. But yes, there's a culture, you know, that's been going on in India and Thailand and the Philippines and a lot of these places where they would take young jackfruit and boil it and it has the texture of meat. So you can season it and give it a jerk flavor. You give it a chicken flavor, a fish flavor, whatever. You, that's fine. You can go there. That brings you into the... It, into the radar, into the fold, but eventually you're going to grow up and you're going to shed that kind of stuff too and you're going to come home to seeds and nuts. Seeds and nuts as your primary protein source and you're not going to need that much. And green jackfruit has very little protein in it anyway. So all you're getting is, is, is the entertainment from the, 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 the texture of the fleshiness of the green jackfruit. That's all, but it's an immature fruit that did not become a calm, a simple carbohydrate. It is still a complex, complicated carbohydrate, but yes, it is not laden with starch, so you can get away with it. So enjoy your pull green jackfruit, uh, pork flavor, or whatever you want to vibrate with it. But, you know, me don't play with them hypocrisy. Good thing that when I grew up and I got into this, I did not deal with fake imitation stuff. I did not deal with gluten where some folks would take the white flour and wash the heck out of it and, and just grab the rubber glue and, and, and boil it and, and make steak and all kinds of stuff with it. I did not grow up with that. No fake food, no artificial food, no TVP, no texturized vegetable protein. What, uh, damn, uh, does fruit roots... Look, uh, mushrooms or toxins release of the earth. Yes, mushrooms are toxic release of the earth. Mushrooms are not food. Behold, I've given unto you every seed yielding foods, and unto you they shall be your meat. Mushroom is not a meat because it's not from a seed yielding food at all. It's it, it's it, it's a sore. Well, they call it spores, <laughs> but it's sores. <laughs> okay. Okay, and it's a fungus. Look, fungus is fungus is fungus is fungus. Whether it's mushrooms or whatever, you know, the ones between your toe, it's yeast. It's a yeast factory. So many of you trying to get away from yeast, and yes, you're feasting high on the mushroom. Mushrooms are toxins. The only difference with the edible ones that you enjoy and the medicinal ones that you enjoy is that those uh, toxic ones that are rated as toxic, some of them will kill you on the spot instantly. You just put it on the tip of your tongue and you're dead. The edible ones, the medicinal ones, they work in a different way. A lot of those ed edible mushrooms, the toxins is very mild. So it may take you 70 years for it to register, 60 years for it to add up. So you think you're getting away with with murder. <laughs> yeah, you're getting away with murdering yourself slowly. That's what you're getting away with. But the reckoning day is here. We got to face up to all of these stuff. And a lot of this so-called uh, medicinal mushroom, look at the chaga. Go right now and, and look and look at it, it, images of the mushroom they call chaga. You see it growing off the side of a tree. It looks like the tree got a sore. <laughs> And they call it a spore. <laughs> they call it a spore. But it's a damn sore on that tree. The tree is releasing venom, poison, 
and yet we go take this thing and use it as a medicinal source because it poisons us. It is no different than what they're telling you to do with vaccine. You know, instead of uh, the, the mosquito smacking you and you get malaria from the mosquito, they're giving you a malaria vaccine that is probably a hundred times, a, t a thousand times more powerful than what you're going to get from the mosquito itself. So yeah, this chaga, this medicinal mushroom is poisoning you and kicking your butt to the point that the body rejects it. And in rejecting it, all the other toxins in your body seem to want to come out with the chaga. So because it detoxifies you through the back, back door method, it is so-called medicinal. Same like vaccine is medicinal. So let's watch it. Let's grow up. Let's come home. Nutritional yeast. What the heck is nutritional yeast? It does not grow from seed. It is a fungus. Yeast is yeast. Why did they actually even have to put the word nutrition in front of it? Why didn't they just call it plant yeast or some other something? <laughs> you know, nutritional. For those intelligent, educated, sophisticated, so-called vegetarians or vegans. <laughs> you're getting a, a nice whipping through, you know. You know, uh, trichonology. Yeast. Yeast is yeast. Nutritional or whatever. Brewers. <laughs> it is still a fungus. So... <laughs> anyway, 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 coming home, brother, yes, come on home. Uh, what do you think of spelt and am amaranth grain? Well, amaranth is a fine grain, so it has less gluten. It has less of the toxic element that is found in grains, which is that starch. So it's, you can sprout it, you can activate it and consume it with just soaking it, sprouting it, processing it, say, in a blender, and create, say, an amaranth cracker, or just an uh, amaranth pudding, you know, or something to that nature. But it's still a seed for cereal grass. But on the other um, hand, the spelt, the spelt is in the wheat family. It just doesn't have as much gluten as the wheat itself. But you got to soak it, s germinate it, sprout it for a few days, let it grow out, so a lot of the complex carbohydrates are turned into simple carbohydrates, basically uh, direct sugar as much as possible. But then how are you going to enjoy the thing, <laughs> you know? So yeah, you can just blend it, make a batter, pancake type batter and dehydrate it and have a spelt cracker or something like that, pizza crust or something to that effect. But still, this is just transition stuff. Okay, you got to come back home. You cannot avoid coming back home. And that's where the, the, all arrows are pointing and leading back home. Fresh plant fruits, fruits and vegetables with little amount of fatty plant foods, avocados. I got to leave out the olives these days because olives are full of salt. All olives are salted. All are, and human beings... Look, you know what the fast food industry did? They got us, most of the fast food, they got us with all the sugar. You know, so the sugar intake increased a hundredfold. And now the salt intake increased 50%. They're whipping us with salt, but they use the sugar to mask a lot of it. So a lot of your, your processed foods, they have salt and sugar in them. But salt, that sodium from salt is a killer. You do not need these foods at all. So masking them and putting them in. So olives are not, you know, an ideal food, you know, in this culture today. Because the fresh olives, you cannot consume them. You cannot enjoy fresh olives. They're the most bitter foods ever in creation, known to, me, to myself, <laughs> for sure. So that's why they process all olives by burying them in salt. So technically, olives are a processed food. So yes, you know, I use a lot of these things in my cuisine when I'm teaching. Because I know a lot of you are coming to me, you know, being high on bread. So I got to teach you how to use sprouted spelt and make 
a sourdough spelt bread. You know, I got to teach you how to take olives and put them in lemon juice. Pour off the brine. Pour off the salt that they're packed in. And marinate them in lemon juice to strip that salt. So that otherwise, you'll be hanging out with me right here when you come to study with me. Just hanging out eating fruits like this. Or go, go to the tree and waiting for the next mango to fall. <laughs> because all of these things are questionable. All these processed foods, all these exciting recipes that I'm sharing with you. Look, it is entertainment for you to achieve greater inner attainment and purify your system to come up to this level. Or come forward to this level. But yes, the fatty plant foods... One of the most excellent one is actually the ackee. The ackee from Jamaica. Powerful food. Powerful protein. Good fat that the body can use. You know, the avocados. You know, the olives. The coconut. You know, the coconut meat. The coconut fat that we make coconut cream with, not coconut uh, oil. Be careful with those types of things. So yes, yes, family. Uh, can I live with, with... Yeah, all of y'all can come and live with me. The, everybody, just come on down here. But understand, I'm, I'm living in a tourist resort environment, so the cost of living is, is quite high. So, uh, so leave a money trail behind you from wherever you're coming from so we can get, get you know, the dues that you paid over there to support you here. Because, <laughs> yeah... <laughs> Get your retirement funds coming down here or have your online business or whatever following you down here because, uh, you know, this is a very high level place to live. But yes, you know, I'm going to have a base in Ghana as well. I'm going to have a base in Africa. I'm going to have bases in places where you can be as well. And, and there are many people who are sharing with me and growing with me even during these days that, uh, yeah, you could still live in my house, but I may not actually be there because I, I really don't want to be disturbed like that. You know, I don't need that responsibility of all y'all coming and living next to me, near me and all that kind of stuff because I still need to live, okay? So it's about empowering you, giving you the keys to defend yourself, to protect your life, and to live on that high vibrational level because there's a lot you could teach me as well. So I don't want you to hold me on some level you know, of respect, which ultimately becomes disrespect, because then I got to forfeit my life, and enough ones have forfeited their lives already for you, you know, enough ones, whether we look at the ones that were entertaining you, like Michael Jackson, that forfeited his whole life, put on that get-up of a false life, false body, false face, and all of this stuff, so he can grab your attention, or Emperor Haile Selassie, <laughs> who got ridiculed and, 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 you know, so much and so forth for sacrificing his life to be your king of kings, your emperor, and all of this stuff. Yes. Nah. Leave me alone. <laughs> leave me alone. I still got the life to live that I was born to love. And yes, part of it might be loving you too. But, you know... Oh, shoot, we're in the age of social distancing. So, so who knows? Some of this stuff really works nice. But it's all about love. So let's laugh. Let's laugh at it. Let's laugh at ourselves. Let's laugh at, it, at each other. Laugh with each other. Let's have fun. Let's have fun. So sometimes when you see me here, a lot of you, you know, or talking about, oh, you're always happy and joyful, you're always bright and upful and positive and all of this stuff. I got no other way to live. And I would not allow anyone the power to disturb me. There's no way you could upset me. There's no way nothing can upset me. There's no way anybody can upset me. Okay? I am living up. <laughs> Period. You know, and this is what I encourage all of you to do. And, but... A lot of it begins from these seeds, these little seeds from these foods that we're eating. We are what you eat. We are definitely what we eat, you know. So, yes, love, love, love. You love this. I love this. 
you know, and this is one of the reasons why, you know, I made the move today. I said, look, you, you guys got enough food, you got enough recipes from me, you know what to do, so let's get on with the conversation, because I want to open up deeply and profoundly with you, and really show this love on the most intense level possible, that we can share it together. So let's take advantage of this period, take advantage of this time, and each one of us, take that ownership. Use me as an example. Use me as a catalyst. You know, if Aris does it, I could do it too. That's it. I can do what any single human being has done who have ever walked this planet. Okay? So yes, Selassie taught me a lot. <laughs> but it's my turn now. You know, it's my turn. Yes, I give him thanks, praise, honor, and everything. And all of the great ones that have ever walked before us, or that are even walking amongst us, they're here to stimulate us, to motivate us, to inspire us, and show us <laughs> that we all got this God spark in us. So part of what I've done is really just, you know, hug it closer and tighter, and let, not let my sparks fly away. You know, so I've basically been guarding myself, taking on the responsibility to make sure that I am my guardian. <laughs> you know, not a guardian, but I am absolutely looking out for number one. And looking out for number one means I've been able to be in the position that I could look out for you. And I can look out for the chickens and the cows and the goats by not abusing them, enslaving them, and destroying them, and try to bury them in my graveyard, in my gut, as a graveyard. They don't need to be buried in my gut as a graveyard. They got many options of where they can choose to retire. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, well, thank all of you, all of you for, for, for the big ups, for the love, and all of these things, but again, you know, line yourself up. And you don't have to follow me on this 73-day fast. Please don't, okay? Please don't. What I would like for you to do, where you are today, who you are today, whatever you're being called, whatever you've been named, look at your earth day. Look at the birthday. Look at the day you were born. So you are 36 years old. You were born in such and such a, a, a year. Okay, so 36 days before your next birthday, or 37 days before your 37th birthday, I want you to do a 37-day fast, like I'm doing my 73-day fast. Okay, get ready for your next birthday. Get ready for your next leap, because every year we're supposed to be leaping, you know. So when I stop consuming rich foods, and only doing liquids for 73 days leading up to the 24th of July, my birthday, <sighs> I'm shedding a lot of baggage. I'm shedding a lot of waste so I can have a true birthday, so I can truly celebrate. And hey, this is the age of social distancing. <laughs> you know, there's no better way to celebrate your birthday than to do it by yourself tuning in with your mother and father. You don't need a distracting party with a big cake with 36 or 37 candles on it and a whole bunch of sugar and a whole bunch of your buddies getting drunk with you off of that cake. No, you need peace, tranquility, you need your love to shine, and you need to embrace with your creators, your mother and your father who made it possible for you to be here. So fast and get ready for that moment, that glorious moment, and live it, love it, enjoy it every year by making that move and getting ready for the most sacred day of your life every day. You know, so that's why I'm fasting, or better yet, I'm juice feasting, <laughs> you know, because it's really not a fast, because I'm just drinking juice. They're filtered. There'd be no fiber in them, so I'm not activating my digestive system, so my body is focused on eliminating for 73 days. 
And mind you, yes, many of you know I did it already this year. From November 1st to January 15th, I did my 73-day fast. But then in my meditation, you know, a few weeks ago, I came to the conclusion that I really need to align this fast properly to correspond with my Earth Day. So I'm doing my second 23-day fast, <laughs> you know, uh -huh. That, that I'm doing now within a say what a, a six month seven month period you know so half of basically you know, you know almost half of you know the past six months you know at least one third of it you know